Hello, uh, nice to meet you. I'm Hal. I'm honored to be here. To be here. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, really? Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm honored to be here and to and to uh, share uh, the story from Japan. My name is Haruseki, a founder of Code for Japan. Let me share my slideshow. Can you see my slides? Okay, great. Uh, I'm going to explain our student participation project and how we used our DCDIM for the project. Um, Code for Japan is a not, not for profit organization promoting civic tech activities in Japan. And our vision is to build a society by thinking and creating together with diverse people. And one of our focusing area is our Make Our City project. It is a challenge to redefine a smart city concept by citizen participation. But why did we need to redefine the concept of smart city? In Japan, many smart city projects are happening in several cities, but most of them are test bed projects and planned by municipalities and enterprise companies. Also, uh, local or national governments preferred to pay for fancy tech solutions like uh, autonomous cars or drone deliveries or health tech, et cetera, et cetera. Such smart city projects were appealing efficiency, convenience, or productivity. But is it true? I believe that the purpose of the city planning is citizen well-being. Focusing efficiency too much may harm the citizen sense of well-being and participatory. And for avoiding such misdirection, we started the Make Our City project. Uh, we Im improve citizens' well-being through citizen centers' city planning, starting from myself. We are developing a platform for prototyping with diverse citizens and uh, researching a data-driven decision-making process. We are also providing citizen participatory city planning methods. Currently, we are running two projects for 
three municipalities and one project with Smart City Institute Japan. Uh, let me introduce this team in this presentation. It is used in various cities uh, from Nishi Aizu village with uh, 6,000 population to Hyogo prefecture with uh, 6 million people. We launched the first instance for Kakogawa City last year. Then Hyogo Prefecture and some other organizations also used our platform to create policies or gather ideas from citizens. Private sectors are also using it. During the planning period in Kakogawa City Smart City Policy, we organized an off offline workshop with the citizens and I realized this kind of intensive workshop is essential to collect citizens' voices. Uh, we put the workshop results to this team, and this kind of offline and online feedback loop is necessary if you want to create a city consensus. Also, a university professor and the capital city started using private spaces for a lecture about city planning with the uh, university students. The online platform's merit is that uh, people can post their opinions any, anytime they want. Uh, as you can see from this chart, uh, 30 to 40 males visit uh, Kakogawa site after 19 p.m. Uh, because they have a daily work uh, on the daytime, so it, uh, before having this uh, it was difficult to join this kind of uh, city planning process. On, and we had the two phases from beginning to today. Rather than or, or ordinary scheme of citizen participation method, we engaged with younger generation. In the initial phase, uh, a quarter of the participants were teenagers, and even now about 15 uh, 45 percent or under uh, 30 years old. And also around uh, 45 people use smartphones to view outside. Let me show other instances. Uh, this is a platform organized by Hakuhodo, uh, the private company. It looks very fun, and and the Sibuya city, a Sibuya road in Tokyo, uh, people uh, uh, submitted many ideas for making the Sibuya city uh, better place. Also, we we are uh, presenting this name at the exhibition called Ooze. The exhibition the exhibition is uh, very popular for young generation now. Uh, but we just started our journey. There are still a lot of un unanswered questions. Uh, how, for example, how can we involve citizens widely? Or uh, the citizen participation process requires a lot of work by municipal officers. So how we can support them? Or uh, how to create a safe space for cons constructive discussions? Or what kind of topics is applicable for this kind of process? That's all for uh, from my end. Thank you for, for listening. Thank you, Scott. And as you said, this just had it started, so let's see how this evolves and, and congrats for, for this work. So, well, now we are going to move to Rosario, Argentina, and uh, this will be a talk in Spanish, and it will be led by Miguel Camelos and Adriana. You and me as well, okay? So let's let's see how we can we can see because we just make like a test, a connection test. Then... Hola, me escuchan? Bien, eh, in iniciamos entonces. Eh, primero agradecer la oportunidad de esta Sí. Adelante, 
Eh, primero agradecer la oportunidad de, de estar aquí. Nosotros venimos trabajando con Decidim desde fines del 2020, de mitad del 2020. Nuestra Secretaría de Modernización y Cercanía fue creada en, a, a fines del 2019. Eh, dan, eh, siguiente, Adriana. Eh, bueno, nosotros el proyecto se llama Evaluación Participativa de la Accesibilidad y Usabilidad de la Plataforma Rosario Participa. Siguiente. Eh, esto está enmarcado en un proceso de transformación digital que, que iniciamos de la Municipalidad de Rosario, que tiene muchas etapas pero que centra su, su, su razón de ser en el usuario, en el ciudadano, en el vecino de la ciudad. No solamente en la transformación digital por el hecho de modernizar el Estado. Por eso la Secretaría se llama de Modernización y Cercanía. Siguiente. Esta transformación digital eh, nosotros la estamos basando en en nuevas formas de vinculación con el ciudadano, nuevos espacios virtuales que la pandemia nos obligó a acelerar eh, su puesta en marcha, nuevas formas de hacer trámites, nosotros tenemos un, un nuevo portal que antes el portal de la Municipalidad de Rosario era un portal que tenía mucho de informar de nuevas actividades, más, si quieren, más de propaganda de las actividades. Y hoy, y hoy eh, nuestro portal es puramente transaccional, es decir, para brindar servicio a los usuarios, a los ciudadanos de la ciudad. No tanto eh, contando qué hace la gestión municipal. Nuevos canales de participación, hemos creado un laboratorio de acupuntura ciudadana, consejos barriales, eh, eh, operativos integrales donde atacamos los problemas eh, de los barrios. Y nuevas herramientas para aumentar la eficiencia del Estado. De hecho, estamos trabajando en una plataforma de interoperabilidad de sistemas eh, expedientes digitales, es decir, despapelizar el, el, el municipio. Y dentro de esto, eh, siguiente Adriana, y, de, y dentro de esto tenemos la plataforma Rosario Participa, que la, eh, después de mucho a, a avanzar, eh, hablamos con gente de Barcelona, de México, con gente que estaba usando Consul como eh, Montevideo, Ciudad de Buenos Aires, eh, nos decidimos a, a incorporar Decidim como plataforma de participación porque nos daba la flexibilidad necesaria para los distintos procesos que estamos tratando de implementar. Si, si entran a participa.rosario.ar lo que van a ver es que hay muchas cantidades de procesos, desde los consejos barriales, que es nuestro nuestro proceso core, central, de participación, hasta los laboratorios de acupuntura ciudadana, que pro, propue, eh, cuyo objetivo es que colaborativamente con los ciudadanos podamos atacar problemas muy puntuales y en corto tiempo de la ciudad, hasta eh, de la Secretaría de Género y Derechos Humanos, que trabaja con el tema de que trabaja con temas de género, obviamente, y de, y de sensibilización sobre la problemática, hasta eh, próximamente vamos a incorporar a la Secretaría de Ambiente con un proceso de, de, del Plan Local de, de Acción Climática, que, que tiene que conformar un consejo y ese consejo se va a construir colaborativamente con vecinos y, y organizaciones, Bueno, y en parte a esto, cuando empezamos a construir esto, una de las preocupaciones que teníamos, pero para todo el conjunto de las web, era la accesibilidad y la usabilidad web. Para eso 
empezamos a trabajar con el equipo de Adriana, que tiene una vasta experiencia en, 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 en accesibilidad web y, y, y trabaja muy bien. Y empezamos, pensamos eh, y nos unimos a una organización que se llama Asuntos del Sur. Y con la metodología de esta y, y nuestros equipos empezamos a trabajar el, el, el proyecto de accesibilidad web en la plataforma Rosario Participa. Si querés, Adriana, podés seguir vos. Sí, sigue. Bueno, continúo con lo que me comentaba Miguel. Rosario es una ciudad, Rosario es una de las ciudades más grandes de la República Argentina y ha sido pionera en la elaboración de políticas públicas eh, que garanticen la participación de personas con discapacidad, eh, disability people, in, en la construcción de políticas públicas. Consideramos que es importante que las personas puedan participar en el proceso de evaluación y acá vamos a mostrar el cronograma de las actividades que nos encontramos trabajando. Sí, en el... directamente. directamente, perfecto. Eh, nosotros, está bien, estamos en el proceso de eh, construcción de las recomendaciones para garantizar espacios accesibles, entornos virtuales accesibles para personas con discapacidad. En, ese, en este momento nos encontramos trabajando con compañeros de trabajo con discapacidad y con organizaciones de la sociedad civil de la ciudad de Rosario que tienen discapacidad y que están testeando y evaluando la participación de Rosario Participa, de la posibilidad de navegar en los entornos y poder hacerlo eh, de la manera que las personas ciegas o con baja visión puedan estar pudiendo participar de los procesos. Nos queda la etapa de noviembre-diciembre, que sería la etapa final, Uy. y con un webinario de presentación pública para el cierre de año. Como podrán ver, hicimos un diseño de formulario que chequeamos la accesibilidad, se recolectaron observaciones, se sigue trabajando en esto y se está construyendo el manual de recomendaciones en este momento. Estamos muy contentos de poder haber utilizado esta plataforma para cumplir con uno de los objetivos que es poder garantizar que las personas con discapacidad puedan hacer uso de los entornos virtuales con igualdad de oportunidades que las demás. Here. So I'm going to be here. Um, I think Arlene is going to be this time. <laughs> 
really sick. I know that you have been done a big effort to try to explain a lot of things, like you have shortened the talk, so with a lot of uh, challenges in the technical side as well. Uh, and so how they have actually have yes. So let's let's start. Thank you. At seven years old, the early morning rush bustled through the doors of Holy Apostles Soup Kitchen. I stood on my tiptoes alongside my mother and tiny arms stretched out serving spoonfuls of mashed potatoes to our visitors. Like clockwork, one of our regulars, a man I'd come to know as Andrew, would come bounding over to the table for his first plate. With his usual cheeky grin and a laugh that echoed within the, fall, within the full alabaster white walls and warmed the hearts of those around them. Andrew, like many of the incredible people that walked through the stores, filled me with a desperate desire to help them beyond the plate of food that I had to offer. So much so that my service extended beyond the volunteering. I had come to believe in the power of the collective, helping people feel seen and heard as they deserve to be. This is what brought me to my work in participatory budgeting. The heart of PB is centering the voices of the people the allocation of informed and meaningful help. From energized neighborhood meetings, collecting ideas for project funding, to insightful conversations with students about their dreams for New York City's future, more than 11 years now, now that I'm here, I can still feel the power of the collective beating strong. PB offers plot platforms for issues greater than us all. As the pandemic ensued in 2020, this power of the collective became even more crucial as the country staggered to regain its footing and recover. Here's how PB looked like as we worked to achieve this. It looked like it's our money. It's our money arose out of a time where many youth programs are disappearing due to budget costs across the city. The process was both youth led and youth designed and we decided how we would spend $100,000 to restore our communities. I'll walk you through the steps. During the first phase, our youth facilitators designed engagement activities that identify youth needs. From this, a statement of needs was published on Decidim that summarized our findings. Our coalition builders partnered with over 80 youth organizations. During the second phase of this process, 51 youth organizations submitted proposals to address the, seat, address the needs that young people had outlined during the process, which were then approved on a ballot by the Civic Engagement Commission. During our third phase, young people had the opportunity to vote. The minimum age requirement was lowered to nine years of age, which, which was distinctly lowered. Yep. Um, okay. Young people then voted on destiny, totaling to 2,028 votes in total. After votes were casted, winners were announced and the winners were as the following. We have the Green Space Project in Brooklyn, Recycling and Climate Change Project in the Bronx, the Young Musicians in Training in Brooklyn, the peer mentoring for high school and college students in the Queens and the Girls Circle in the Bronx. All of these organizations received $20,000 to implement their projects. Thank you so much, Darlene, for, for leading this critical work. Um, I always say that participatory budgeting isn't something that residents do when they love their cities. It's, it's something that cities do when they love their residents, when they see them when they hear them. Um, in the past few days, we've witnessed examples of this uh, so many times. We heard Ernesto Orosa talk about how the internet is changing how humans organize. Last night, we all heard Mackenzie work, give us new language to describe the vectors that are extracting surplus data from us. Um, the resistance is real. 
in New York City, the people voted to create a brand new agency dedicated to resisting the typical ways government does things. It's called the Civic Engagement Commission. And last year, when we put in hand people flyers for this process, we resisted. We used text it in to text to create keywords for people to text us to get involved in our process. When we put in travel to youth organizations to meet the most marginalized communities where they were, we resisted. We went on YouTube and we broadcast our messages live, which is what you can see here on the screen. We opened up our calendars using Calendly and I let young people book time directly with us and walk through our full list activity. Unfortunately, we couldn't resist Zoom. We used that too. Uh, maybe next year we'll use this. But however cynical the last year has made us, we're, we're here because we're hopeful. Through Destiny, we encode our highest aspirations for the future, which is the work we do right now. And I think we all know it's more than just code, it's people too. And so here's the best thing that I think you can do for Destiny and yourself in the next 48 hours. Reach out to a child whose life you're in. For me, it's my nephew and Tony. And ask them what they know about your work. Ask them what questions they have about your work. Share that conversation with your colleagues. We're at a critical moment right now in defining what's next, not just for Destiny, but we're each also figuring out what's next for our work. And if you're not thinking about young people now, then how will it become a priority for you? Power sharing is something you value and needs to be built into your work at the most foundational level. See young people, hear them, and let it change your life. Thank you. So, so, so inspired, thank for your, your work. I think that it's a vast, like, half some work, some work to do. And in fact, it's that if you don't invest with these young people, it's like, no stuff. It's like a mess. So, thanks, thanks again, and thank you again as well. It has been like a, a pleasure to have you. So, yeah, with this last talk from New York, we have finished our travel around the world with Muslim stories. And thanks again to all of you, Miguel, Carl, uh, so thank you. And I'll see you. Let's continue with Muslim Fest.